for this one, what we did was to have the top slot cast when it was being done. Then the rest of the concrete is what we use to do the screening on the floor. That was a day or two before. So immediately you come and you are going to set up the main construction or the main blog lane or brick lane, which one that you're using. Then you know that you have a, a firm ground of which to put your mortar and then your blocks can come on it. It makes it easier. So we are using corridor blocks for this digester. We are using the five inches one, five inches solid. And we usually prefer the corridors because then it goes a long way to ensure the long lasting use of the digest. And then you get your location right. You get the exact place you are going to site the bio digester. You can do this together with the plumber and the homeowner as well. Or you can give them your technical advice. That's what is going to work for the bio digester. What it also means is that where are the pipes coming from? How many toilets are in the house? How many pipes are coming from which part of the building? You need to know all these things to decide where you are going to place the bio digester. Some homeowners will let you know that they prefer the bio digester at the back and it's hidden. But maybe there's a guest toilet in front of the house. Is it going to work when you leave it at the back there? Will it come? Will it not fall under it? Will it be enough gradient for you to come for you? A gentle slope that will work for your biodigester. You need to agree on these ones before you decide where you are going to site the biodigester. Maximum feet is two feet. You have to go. Then probably you are looking at three feet. How many costs of block are you going to lay? What is the level of the house when the final groundworks are done? How many inches does the homeowner or the architect or the groundworks do they look out for? Now, you have options. You do have a soak away, which means that you are going to do some block work and have the leche pipe connected to it. Or you are going to have a soak hole pit, which means that you are going to have stones that will be laid in it. And then you are going to have some rubber or carpet on top of it. And then you are going to put back the topsoil on it so that it can be buried in the ground. There are conditions for having a soak hole pit, which means that the ground is good for you and it's going to work perfectly for soaking the wastewater. That will be coming to the soak away from the biodigester. The gradient is key in this situation. You don't want the water to go back. It's to lay the blocks. That's if you are doing it using blocks or bricks or to use a prefabricated slabs and have them erected to fit the size of the hole that you have dug. When you are doing biodigester using blocks, we prefer you use the quarry dust blocks because they are firm. They have been pressed and they can contain any moist or any water that might retain in the biodigester. The digester bed has also been done in terms of the screening. In natural fact, the screening was done even before the blocks were laid on the ground. We did the screening using the concrete. That came from the mortar and the mixture that we did for the top slab, which we had cast a day or two earlier as the construction work was going on. So ahead, you can see is where the soak away is going to be. And then the shear pipe is what's going to be connected to it. This is what the soak away basically was going to be like. The shear pipe is in it. It must be done with the holes leaving the pores that will allow the wastewater to seep around the surrounding earth. And then it must have a, a top cover that was going to have a clean out on it, like an access chamber, which will ensure that you can always have access to the inside of the soak away return on your investment when it comes to biodigester construction. So the next time you are constructing a biodigester, ask for a traditional soak away to be attached to the digester. So we are we are now laying preparing the biodigester bed. We are doing the bedding material. The first of them is to put the mosquito net or the fiber net into the porous slab that might have already been laid in, as you can see. The porous slab is going to have the pores and then it's going to have the holes, which allows the wastewater to seep into the screening surface and then through the shape pipe into the soak away. So make sure that it's tagging neatly at the sides you don't want anything to pass the side and enter the screening surface 
of the biodigester. The fiber net or the mosquito net must be tacking neatly and then to make sure that all the layers fit in perfectly when it comes to what you are doing. The understanding is also that when it comes to doing the maintenance work, then this layer is what will be taken out from the biodigester bed, including the residue of what is left of the biodegradable material and then the human waste residue, including all the inorganic materials will all be on the net. And then those ones can be taken out from the biodigester bed. So it's key to always have your fiber net or your mosquito net as part of your biodigester construction when it comes to the bedding material. The next thing is to put your coconut fiber or treated coconut husk into the biodigester bed. With this, you are also going to guarantee that your biodegradation process works according to perfection and that is also going to make sure that the scent will be taken out. Usually what happens with scents in biodigesters is because of the wastewater. If you have that your biodigester is such a way that the water is going out from the digester and then the coconut fiber is treating the human waste, is, there's virtually going to be no scent. It's highly unlikely to, for you to have scent because the scent comes from the fact that the water has been mixed with the human waste. So you spread the coconut fiber evenly on top of the biodigester bed. Make sure that it's enough, it's plenty. It's covering all the areas of the biodigester bed. The inlet pipe where the human waste will come from must have a bigger chunk of the coconut fiber. This ensures that whenever the, the human waste comes on it, then it can spread evenly across the other surfaces. Ensure this is done and then your biodigester is good to go. So this is the completed work in terms of the Tsukawi and then the biodigester itself with the biodigester bed. The inlet pipe, as you can see there, the Shilashi pipe in the Sukawe is what you can also see there. And then the biodigester is at the other side. So there's a gradient coming in, and this is how to construct a biodigester using the traditional Sukawe and then having it done using blocks as well. The next thing that must be done is to cover the biodigester bed with the top slabs. These slabs should have been done earlier and be allowed to cure wall before you take them. These slabs are done with fire rods and a mixture of concrete and then your mortar to make sure that it's firm and it has to be cast. The next video showing on the channel is going to explain to you how biodigesters work and how you can use it as an option in managing your human waste.